psychotherapist and a social worker. I always explain to people I'm a social worker by degree, a therapist by practice. Uh, I do therapy. I do everything from intakes. I work to do uh, bariatric intakes. I also do uh, psychotherapy um, before the zombie apocalypse here. I was doing EMDR in my office. I also do clinical hypnosis. I'm now doing telehealth and telemental health. Uh, talking to people specifically about how to deal the, the subject of the virus has come up more than anything else now. My original thoughts was when this was going to hit is that everyone would be totally in anxiety mode. I found out that more people are having to deal with the fact that they're extroverts and that this is a changed world now. Um, this is like a horror movie for them. This is like instead of Planet of the Apes, it's Planet of the Introverts. And introverts now are loving it, staying at home, isolating, not talking to nobody, seeing people through their computers and stuff like that. The kids and people that thought they would love being off school are literally going bonkers now because it's fun to stay up late and play video games and do that for a couple of days and then when they realize they cannot get their fix. And for an extrovert, your fix is other people not being in contact with other people is really making it tough and people are starting to find out that they're lonely, they're feeling the isolation, they're, they're anxious because they want just to be around other people. My advice to them has been uh, take this time to see how the other half lives, take it in stride, uh, maybe this will help understand how some of your friends who are not so extroverted get along, how they communicate, even though I'm one of the big discouragers on social media, I actually encourage people in this case to actually contact friends, relatives, people they hadn't talked to in a long time. This is an excellent opportunity to reach out and just talk to those people, family members, friends that you haven't had contact with for a long time. Uh, there's lots of different ways to connect over your phone, over your computer, between Skype, uh, Zoom, all the different programs, WhatsApp, there's lots of ways for people to talk to other people. I've encouraged them to actually have video conferencing with their friends. Uh, for the adults out there, uh, video parties. Uh, I've told people that the idea is, is you set up your cameras, you dress up just like you're going to have a night out, you sit down at the dinner table or you sit down at the coffee table and you play games, they've been playing charades over the phone, they've been doing things to stir up interaction via the internet, via their phones, um, actually having video parties. It's a way that you can be at home, have contact with people, and still maintain the, the needed social isolation. That's, it's, it's a matter of health. And so being able to do that allows you some contact. The other thing that I tell people is getting exercise. True, you're not supposed to go places where other people are, but you can still exercise. You can still go for a walk. There is sunshine. This isn't the zombie apocalypse, and hopefully nobody will eat you if you walk down the sidewalk. So please get over and get some sunshine. The last thing we need is a giant, massive vitamin D deficiency across the country because everybody crawled into their basements and caves for four weeks. Get out in the sunshine, go for a walk, take your pets for a walk, take your kids for a walk, go with your kids, go out, let them bicycle and walk with them. Uh, that way, you know, everyone's safe. I don't advise people to just go out alone and hoof it, but go with a family member, go with a friend, take your phone. If you still have to talk and you're a phone talker, talk to people while you're taking your walk. But get out there in the sunshine, do what you can to get exercise. I had uh, one client telling me, well, I, I need to go buy some exercise equipment. I'm like, no, please don't use this as an excuse to go to the store. There are things around the house you can do to exercise. A lot of people have water jugs. Right now, that's your perfect dumbbells. You can actually adjust them to half a water jug, full water jug, two water jugs at a time. Use them as dumbbells and weights. Put them on the broom. Uh, guys, Put them on the broom at a distance and hold them. Don't hold the middle of the broom because if you break your wife's broom, I don't want to hear about it and I don't want her calling me about it. But do it wisely. Use them as weights. Do the normal exercises you can do like sit-ups, push-ups, uh, leg lifts, uh, you know, squats on a wall. Uh, this is also a good time for you to practice that yoga, that meditation, um, doing that. There are groups that do it. You can find them online. Look for those people. You can actually call up your friend 
both of you watch the same yoga program on the TV, have the phone together and actually talk to your friend or hear them while you're doing your exercise routines, yoga routines, so that you can still have social contact, still exercise and do everything you want to do. Uh, there are tons of exercise programs. I encourage you to use the internet and YouTube, use Gaia, use anything you can to get exercise videos to do that. This is the time where you can actually commit to an exercise program. I don't want to hear crud from anybody about I don't have time. Right now you realize it's all you really do have is time and you need to use it wisely. Use it to exercise, use it to feel better. As I tell people, don't bust up your circadian rhythm. Your circadian rhythm dictates what time you, you wake up, what time you go to sleep, when you rest. For people who normally go to bed at a certain time and get up, try sticking to your routine. Uh, try crunching your day in a mat matter that will let you go to bed when you normally go to bed. I know you tend to want to binge watch all night since you know you don't have to go to work tomorrow morning or you stay on the video games all night long. Please think about going ahead and shutting them down at a reasonable time, doing what you normally do, calm down, get some sleep, set your alarm, yes, that evil machine that wakes you up in the morning, but keep setting it and keep getting up at a regular time, have a regular routine. I practice what I pe preach. I get up in the morning, I have my alarm, my times really haven't changed through the day, my alarm goes off. I actually do telehealth sessions. Uh, I talk to people via the internet and still do telemental health and I see them on a regular basis at regular appointment times. Um, in that sense, I try to keep my world as normal as I can and my routine as normal as I can. By doing those things, it allows a, a sort of a sense of where things are that kind of helps calm you down all on its own. Uh, I explain to people that this is part of change and all things change. It's hard to predict what's going on in the world. And that sense of safety that people, most people have that everything's going to be the same every day is stirred up a little bit. Put as much normalcy as you can in your life. Put things back to routine. Do what you can to get back to normal. I know everybody's already had their big binge watching, their big video gaming, so consider actually going back to a schedule now. If you want to reduce the anxiety that your children might be experiencing now, keep them on routine. Kids, whether they gripe about it or not, will enjoy it because routine for kids is the number one thing. They don't admit it, but having a boundary actually allows them to feel safe in their own world keep them doing things that they should normally do. Have a normal routine time to sit down, study, do homework if they have Google Classrooms. Do those things that they normally do at a set time. Have regular meal times. Have regular family time. During the day, if everyone runs around their different rooms and through the house, that's okay, but this is an excellent time to actually sit down and have the family dinner meal and to eat together at the table and talk for a minute. Conversation is another big soother for everybody. As much as information as you can get out to your kids, give that to them. Let everyone know what's going on, but do it in a calm manner. And don't make it the center of all your conversations. Actually make an effort maybe to sit down at the dinner table and talk about something different, like what they did in school. Ask them about their video games. Ask them about what's going on. Um, we tend to focus on things that we see in the TV, in the media, on the news, everything's going on. And when we do that, what happens is, is we, it's almost like ruminating. It's self-programming to lock in on an issue and stay on it. And since it's a worrisome, bothersome issue, people are getting very hyped up and excited. They're spending every free moment looking at it, watching the news over and over again. And as I tell anybody, if you focus on something that's really upsetting, you're only going to get upset. So the idea is how to move your attention. We tend to sort of fall like into a whirlpool back into the biggest thing that's happening now, which is the current virus. We've had viruses for years and years and different ones and some more serious than others. Right now, this is one that's hitting a lot of people in a lot of places pretty hard. But I have no doubt we will make it through it and we will survive to the other side. And hopefully we will all learn lessons from this about how to cope, how to work with each other, and how to do what we can to keep safe. Thank you.